Ken Surfs here with another shave video. Now, I'm gonna be starting the shave video in about probably a couple of hours, but I'm gonna be using a brush that I'm gonna be restoring this afternoon. And that brush is a 300 PBT Ever Ready brush. This is what it looks like now. And it's, you know, a little bit beat as you can see. Quite a bit beat. So I wanted to show you what she looks like now, and then I'll show you what she looks like when she's done. So hopefully it uh, it turns out to be good, but uh, here's the before picture, and when we get back, we're gonna be doing the after picture. And I'm using some new software now, and I'm still working out the bugs on this camera, and hopefully it doesn't white balance bounce as much. Uh, I took a tip from uh, Mr. Steve Hardy, one of the uh, gentlemen who watches the videos, and I purchased an app for this iPhone where it uh, almost like helps make it a professional quality video. But I'm still learning, so if you see a little white balance, uh, give me time, I'm figuring it out. All right, so I'm gonna see you in a few seconds, but for me it's gonna be a couple of hours, and I'm gonna do the restoration on this brush. All right. All right, we're in the man cave, AKA the garage, and I know I took the old knots out when I did them with a uh, uh, Dremel, and the Dremel still comes in handy for polishing, but if you want that knot out really quick, uh, this drill press is the way to go. But first, you have to remove the bristles. So I'm gonna use a razor blade and cut them flat. All right, now the easiest way to do it is to just get a single edge razor blade and uh, slice her right through. And I'm gonna do that, but I've gotta take my hand off the camera because uh, I need my hand, my other hand to hold it. So we will cut that off right now. All right, I forgot to mention you should put a towel down because that gross old hair goes everywhere. So then what you end up having is a nice, nice cut ready for the drill press. So let's see what we can do. Now I will be using a, a protective face mask because you just never know. And that's my safety tip of the day. That's it. Now we just have to get that excess out, and for that we'll use the Dremel. All right, now I'm gonna use this cutting bit on the Dremel. Right now I've got the uh, sander in there, but I'm gonna use the cutting bit just to knock down some of that excess that's right there. So now I'm going to see if I can scrape out and pull out the rest of this nonsense right there. And let's see what we can do. All right, and now we're going to, it's cleaned out pretty good now. I'm just going to polish this up a little bit in there with this uh, drum sander and we'll uh, make it nice and round again. This is the part that gets frustrating because you've kind of rounded out the hole a little bit and you've got your badger knot here, but it just doesn't quite fit. So what you've got to do is you've got to use that drum sander to widen that up just a little bit more because it's almost there, almost there, ready for the new knot. All right, we're getting closer, but you don't want to overdo it. So what you have to do is it's better to do a little at a time than do too much. Perfect. Now I'm going to sand this outside down a little bit and get rid of some of this junk that's on there. And then we can get the Dremel out and we can polish this bad boy. All right. All right, I got a pretty good selection of sandpaper. I got 1,200. I've got 2,000. 
I've got 2,500 and I have some 320. And I'm going to start with a 320 and I'm just going to get some of the major scuffs out. And I'm not going to make this thing look perfect, but I do want to have it looking better than what it does right now. All right, I've sanded down a lot of the junk. Now I'm going to get that Dremel polisher out and we're going to see what we can do. All right, now on the Dremel, we're going to be using some of these cloth polishing pads. Do not, and I repeat, do not use cotton. Only use cloth. Cotton will tear this plastic to pieces. Cloth is very forgiving. And I'm going to use some of the Flitz polish on this, and it's going to really bring this back to life. All right, so what I've done is I've got the cloth pad on the Dremel, and I'm going to put some of this Flitz polish. I'm just going to put it on there and kind of smear it around. Oops, don't want to put too much, but you want to get it nice and wet. There we go. You can always add a little more later. Now we should be ready to go. See that? See that sign? Really see it coming back to life now. And as you see, she cleans up pretty darn good. Now, for the lettering on the bottom. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some gold leaf. Here we go, some testers gold leaf paint. I'm going to use a little paintbrush. And I'm just going to touch it on there. And then once I touch it on there, I'm going to take a rag and I'm going to wipe it off. And it should stay on the, uh, the highlighted areas. So we will see. All right, and there you have it. Now you may notice there's some still some imperfections around there but it's the bottom of the brush, so I really don't care. So now we're ready to place the uh, knot into the, uh, into the brush, and we will epoxy it. All right, so I'm gonna be using this two-part epoxy, and it uh, sets in five minutes. And what you really need to do is you really need to have a nice uh, container to mix it in. So I'm gonna use this container, and you just have to kind of estimate how much it's going to take to uh, fill that. And to add a little weight, I am going to be dropping in some pachinko balls. Now you could even use washer, I mean heavy duty nuts or something like that to add a little weight, but I will be using some pachinko balls because I do like the brush to be a little heavier than it is just light plastic. in half and half in here. That is the hardener. You can see where it is, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to probably fill it up to about here with the uh, resin. So let me make sure I get my mark right. About right to my thumb. I usually will mark it, but uh, for the effort of time. Should do a 50-50 mix. Very good. And then you gotta stir that bad boy up. I usually have coffee stirrers for this, but uh, in the effort of time, I'm just gonna use a screwdriver and make sure I get it all off that screwdriver because you do not want this stuff on there starts to get hot as it's setting. Very good. And we'll wipe the excess off that screwdriver outside of camera view. I will 
start to pour this epoxy into the uh, opening. And I've already got a couple of pachinko balls in there, but I'm going to drop a few more so you can see it going in. And I just wanted to put them in later because I I want the res or the epoxy to go underneath. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it. I'm going to fill this container just so it starts to come out of the hole. And it is settling. I've done a couple of these, so I kind of have the feel on how much to put in. Put a little too much in on that one. It's going to be some air bubbles coming up. See the air? Air bubbles coming up. And it's starting to expand. I'm going to pour a little out because I don't want to have too much. You just have to make sure you clean it off of the uh, top real good before it sets. Ah, oh, look at that. I took out too much. It's a lot easier when you're not doing it on camera, let me tell you. Okay. And what I do is I like to rotate it around so it uh, gets the edges real well and when you put in the brit or the knot here we go you want to see a little bit coming out there we go I see a little bit coming out and now what I do as it's setting up I turn it a little bit so that way it's flowing all around the inside of that knot. Nice and secure. Now it says five minutes. Five minutes for that stuff to harden. But uh, I generally wait about a half an hour. And this will get very, very hot. But uh, sure does look nice now. A lot nicer than it did, doesn't it? All right, so I'm going to let it dry now, and we'll get back to you. I don't know if you can see, but you can just start to see some of that resin or that uh, epoxy coming out at the bottom of the knot there. And that's exactly where you want it to be. It's starting to get warm now. Chemical reaction. And that's it. Came out real nice. Real nice. Now the only problem is this video ran a little long. Uh, it's about 14 minutes and you know I'm not going to uh, add another five minutes in a shave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video and that was the restoration of the EverReady 300 PBT Pure Badger. And uh, the next video I'll be a shave with it. Alright, till next time it's Ken Surfs.